Hi everyone, we're back and the topic for discussion today is lab values and diagnostic test. We all know as nurses that uh, I'll give you a scenario. Here is a nurse who's up to her daily routine. She's getting ready for work. She's got her little kid ready. Her routine is she usually takes the kid to school and then continues on to work. But she gets to her car today and she's in for a big surprise. The car won't start. Well, it goes without saying something is obviously wrong. And in order to get to the bottom of the problem, it has to be diagnosed. So she cannot figure it out. What does she do? She calls the tow truck, and the tow truck's going to arrive and take it to the mechanic shop, and that's when she's going to find out what the real issue is. But in the meantime, she's stuck. She's stressed out trying to figure out what to do because her car needs to be fixed so she can get on with her day. Well, let's take it this a little bit further and apply it to patients. What happens to the patient who finds themselves in a position where they need to have lab values done? Here's the case of this patient. Two passers-by noticed a woman face down on the beach. They call 911 and the woman is transported to the emergency room. In the ER, this person is identified and the doctor tells her he's going to have to run some tests. Um, he does a CBC uh, lab values and it reveals that the WBCs were around 12,000 which is uh, very very high. About a week ago she had abdominal surgery done and the high fever and the elevated WBCs and the abdominal surgery all seem to be suggestive of a septic event. So I guess she'll need further evaluation. And this is again what we talk about a diagnostic test in order to arrive at a conclusion, in order to fully complete the diagnostic process, tests have to be done. In her case, it was the CBC, the complete blood count, which was the giveaway. Next, we're going to the next topic for discussion is ectopic pregnancy. And typically what happens in an ectopic pregnancy is pregnancy can start off completely normal, but because of the damage to the cilia in the fallopian tubes for whatever reason. Some of the causes might be infections such as PVD, it might be surgical procedures in the pelvic area, smoking, uh, fertility treatments. I'm not going to get into the causes because I'm not sure of all of them. But anyway, once the cilia in the fallopian tubes have been damaged, as the fertilized ovum is swept down into the uterus, it cannot move at the normal speed, so it gets stuck there and starts to develop. Um, usually that develops in the fallopian tube until it ruptures and then what we call it's called an ectopic pregnancy. Some of the signs and symptoms include abdominal pain that may be sharp or diffuse and an ectopic pregnancy again it has to be diagnosed. So the diagnostic tests that are done includes a pelvic exam when that patient is taken to the emergency room and then there's an abdominal ultrasound is also done and their lab values. And that's the story of the person with the ectopic pregnancy. Next, we're going to talk about a cardiac stress test. And we all know that many patients have cardiac problems. It might be a myocardial infarction they had in the past or some other form of cardiac disease. Or it might just be that there are other things to be addressed, like an, uh, you know, impending doom, pretty much. So these tests are done. Um, anyhow, let's talk about this particular patient who's having a cardiac stress test done. He's made to walk the treadmill uh, with the treadmill with no, it's not inclined. This is the cardiac stress test. And the level of speed is supposed to be increased every three minutes. Notice that while he's on the treadmill, there's monitoring going on. It's because this is a diagnostic test. Blood pressure is being monitored. His oxygen saturation is being measured. The EKG tracing and heart rate are, re are also being recorded as the test is in progress and also the patient tolerance is recorded, EKG, blood pressure changes, chest pain, dizziness or shortness of breath. Because if a patient has any cardiac issues, it will manifest when he's put to walk on the treadmill. Some patients don't do very well, some do well, some improve. Some patients cannot even get past the first minute or so, depending on what the diagnosis is. And I hope you've enjoyed learning from this. Have a great day.